Search and rescue efforts continue for the sixth day in Surfside, Florida. It's a race against the clock, with 11 confirmed dead and 150 still missing. Facebook just dodged two antitrust lawsuits, with a D.C. court ruling in the tech giant's favor. But the Texas Supreme Court just ruled that Facebook can be held accountable for sex trafficking. This comes as the House Judiciary Committee just passed six new bills to limit the monopolistic power of big tech giants. And there's been a spike in convicted sex offenders arrested at the southern border. This comes as Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued a state of disaster declaration recently. Tune in to Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Rescue efforts enter the sixth day in Florida. 11 people are confirmed dead and 150 still unaccounted for from last week's condo collapse in South Florida. Families of the missing are desperately seeking news of their loved ones and demanding answers over what caused the tragic condo collapse. Rescue workers from across Florida, from Israel and Mexico are fighting the clock and trying to keep themselves safe from further collapse. These situations are very tight, they're very complicated. It's, it's a situation where we try to think and believe there's hope always. Questions are mounting over the cause of the collapse. There was something very, very wrong at this building. Buildings in America just don't fall down like this. The investigation into the cause could take months, but a 2018 report revealed several things, including major structural damage below the pool deck. In April, residents received a letter from the condo board president saying the damage has gotten significantly worse and the concrete deterioration is accelerating. An attorney for the condominium board says she doesn't think the building was in a state of disrepair prior to the collapse. The board is already in the process of, of hiring an engineer to also try to figure out what happened, and they will be evaluating who's responsible. People are demanding answers and praying for miracles. The cause of the collapse is still under investigation. President Biden and the First Lady are set to visit Florida on Thursday. The White House says they'll visit the families and victims of the collapsed building. Now, what about the building's twin? About a block away is Champlain Towers North. It's the same design as the collapsed building. It's faced the same weather conditions as the other one, now in ruins. But as for the residents, most are staying. They are confident this building doesn't have the same flaws as the other one. That's according to the Associated Press. A 2018 engineer's report found concrete deterioration in the underground parking garage and damage in the slab beneath the pool deck of the other building. Many residents of Champlain Towers North believe their building doesn't have those problems. The collapse of the Champlain Towers South has triggered investigations into older buildings, with the mayor calling for an audit of all buildings over 40 years old. Now let's turn to international concerns. Things are heating up in Syria. Iranian-backed militia groups reportedly launched rocket attacks against U.S. troops in Syria. This comes shortly after U.S. airstrikes in the region. Spokesman for U.S. operations in the region, Colonel Wayne Morado, reported rocket attacks against U.S. troops in Syria. Morado says they returned fire against the rocket launching positions in self-defense. Iranian-backed militia groups claimed responsibility for firing the rockets. That's according to the Jerusalem Post. The attacks came hours after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended U.S. airstrikes near the border between Iraq and Syria. Blinken told reporters that the airstrikes were to limit the risk of escalation and send a clear message of deterrence. Those strikes took place Sunday against facilities suspected of housing Iranian-backed militants. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby released a statement saying the facilities were used to conduct drone attacks against U.S. soldiers. He says, as demonstrated by this evening's strikes, President Biden has been clear that he will act to protect U.S. personnel. Iraq's military issued a condemnation of the U.S. strikes, calling them a blatant and unacceptable violation of Iraqi sovereignty and national security. Iraqi militia groups vowed to retaliate for the U.S. attacks. Kirby says U.S. troops are stationed in Iraq under the invitation of the Iraqi government. He says that U.S. troops have the right to defend themselves under international law, and President Biden has directed the military to take further action to disrupt and deter attacks. This comes a day after President Biden met with Israel's president at the White House. There, he doubled down on his support for Israel, adding he would not tolerate a nuclear-capable Iran. 
Now let's turn from international tensions closer to home, the big changes to big tech. Let's kick off with Facebook, a lot happening there. First off, Facebook entered the trillion-dollar market capitalization for the first time yesterday. It's now the fifth U.S. firm to do so. That's after a D.C. federal court dismissed two antitrust lawsuits against Facebook. Last December, the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, and attorneys general from 48 states and territories slapped two antitrust lawsuits on Facebook. They allege the tech giant has a monopoly, noting its purchases of WhatsApp and Instagram. But yesterday, a judge ruled the FTC didn't have enough evidence. Facebook shares skyrocketed after that, gaining 4.2 percent. But it's not over yet. The FTC has until July 29th to file an amended complaint. And antitrust seems to be picking up steam. The House Judiciary Committee just passed six new bills to limit the monopolistic power of big tech giants. It's a major step forward, but many note there's still a long way to go. Democratic Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Representative Jared Nadler, called the bills a historic package of bipartisan legislation with the goal of reining in anti-competitive abuses of the most dominant firms online. The bills aim to break down big tech's monopolistic power by making it harder for them to acquire potential rivals, as well as to prevent them from selling or promoting their own products to wipe out competitors. The House Antitrust Subcommittee found that big tech oligarchs are squashing competitors by buying them out or replicating their products. That's after a year and a half long investigation into the four tech giants. For example, they found that Amazon uses data collected from its own independent sellers to replicate and promote its own Amazon made products. The five bills aim to regulate the digital marketplaces and prevent monopolies. This is the biggest move yet to make big tech smaller. If these bills pass, tech giants will have to restructure business practices or break apart. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Amazon, Apple, Facebook and Alphabet's Google are pushing back. And some U.S. representatives are also voicing concern. Ohio Representative Jim Jordan issued a statement saying big tech is out to get conservatives. He says the Democrats are pushing, quote, radical antitrust legislation that will systematically change the U.S. economy as we know it. Instead, he is pushing for legislation that, quote, holds big tech accountable and actually addresses censorship of conservatives online. He says that legislation is coming out in a few days. Now, while Facebook seems to have dodged the antitrust bullet for now, it's not so lucky in other areas. The Texas Supreme Court just ruled that Facebook can be held accountable for sex trafficking. Usually, if a Facebook post defames another person, the user can be sued, but Facebook can't. That's because Section 230 of the Federal Communications Decency Act provides immunity for web platforms from the words or actions of their users. But the Texas Supreme Court ruled on Friday that Facebook could be held liable if sex traffickers use the platform to prey on children. The state court's majority wrote, We do not understand Section 230 to create a lawless no-man's-land on the Internet in which states are powerless to impose liability on websites that knowingly or intentionally participate in the evil of online human trafficking. Facebook has contended that it's protected under Section 230. But Justice Jimmy Blacklock noted that holding Internet platforms accountable for their own misdeeds is quite another thing. The ruling follows three Houston-area lawsuits involving teenage trafficking victims. Victims of teenage sex trafficking filed the lawsuits, alleging they met their abusers through Facebook's messaging service. They also claim that Facebook violated the Texas Civil Practice and Remedies Code, which was approved in 2009. Facebook asked the courts to dismiss their lawsuits, arguing that Facebook is protected under Section 230 of the Federal Communications Decency Act. But the court sided with the sex trafficking victims, saying they can move forward with their lawsuits against Facebook. The court's majority opinion stated, We hold only that the statutory claim for knowingly or intentionally benefiting from participating in a human trafficking venture is not barred by Section 230 and may proceed to further litigation. Prosecutors also accused Facebook of failing to block sex traffickers from using the site. A Facebook spokesperson told Fox Business the company is reviewing the decision and considering potential next steps.
According to a report by the Human Trafficking Institute, nearly 60 percent of online victim recruitment in active sex trafficking cases occurred on Facebook in 2020. The report notes that makes Facebook, quote, by far the most frequently referenced website or app in public sources connected with these prosecutions. The report adds the same is true for 2019. Now, speaking of sex trafficking, what about sex offenders? There's been a rise in convicted sex offenders arrested at the southern border. Border Patrol agents have arrested 353 illegal aliens with sex-related criminal convictions so far this fiscal year. That's compared to 55 last fiscal year and a total of 58 for 2019. Del Rio Border Patrol Section Chief Austin Skirrell said the section has seen a 1,400 percent increase in the number of sex offenders arrested by Border Patrol agents. He says, we've gone through this before. We've seen these increases, these surges for the last 30 or 40 years. It's never been this bad. Adding, I'll tell you that straight up, I've never seen it this bad. According to the newly appointed acting Border Patrol chief, Border Patrol has detected more than 250,000 illegal aliens who have evaded capture so far this year. He says, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't read a paper or a report from my agents that talks about criminal aliens, sexual offenders that they've apprehended out there. Adding it's impossible to estimate what the real number who have evaded Border Patrol without detection are. Now, according to reports by Customs and Border Protection, many of the criminals being caught have already been deported, sometimes on multiple occasions. Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued a state of disaster declaration on June 10th. He said, we are going to start making arrests, sending a message to anyone thinking about coming here. You're not getting a free pass. You're getting a straight pass to a jail cell. He notes 34 border counties that are struggling with cross-border crime and illegal immigration. Abbott and Arizona Governor Doug Ducey issued calls for help to other governors. Several Republican governors so far have pledged support. They've sent law enforcement personnel or National Guard troops. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.